Everyone, this is three questions with Livia Chan. Yeah, go through my music, Livia. <laughs> I had to I have to play the little theme song. I, I don't know why I have to, but I just feel it's kind of part of the podcast. So hey Livia, thanks for yeah, thanks for being here today. Uh, I am really excited just to sit down and talk to you. And I know we've connected online uh, for a while. I've read a lot of your stuff and I'm looking forward to, we're just kind of having this shorter conversation right now. We're going to kind of dig into things in a little bit, but uh, you know, I, I've read a lot of your stuff. You, a lot of people have connected with you, especially in the last little while. I've really been noticing that. And I know that some of the things that you share are really, you know, profound, uh, inspirational. And when you look back at your educational career when you look back you know as your time as a student who was a teacher that inspired you and like what what stood out to you well you know when i thought about your question there wasn't any teacher that really stood out to me as a student i had lots of great teachers that were coaches of mine for badminton and basketball and all that mm -hmm. but there wasn't one particular that really stood out in that sense and so to answer your question is more a teacher that was uh influential for me as a teacher mm -hmm. if that's okay to share instead absolutely absolutely <laughs> so there is actually two um one is her name is janet chow and the other is lucky signy and i know these people because they're part of our staff development team in learning technologies and so they would put on different workshops and things like that and and so i went to a lot of their workshops and brought into my classroom the tools that i was able to use successfully with my kids to really affect change and really see a difference in integrating that technology with my curriculum. And, uh, and then seven years later, there was an opportunity for me to join the team. And so when I did, I just learned a ton from them. And I, I feel like it's just really changed who I am as a teacher mm -hmm. because of their influence in my life. And these are two phenomenal educators that just really pour their whole heart into what they do and it just you know it, they believed in me and took me in as part of their their third triangle in the in, in our on our team and they always work so hard and you know being me being on the team i feel like i worked hard too but next to those two i felt like they made me feel like i, I was lazy <laughs> although like, like work, i work we work serious hours being part of that team um but so uh, it, this is, this is a question that I get asked all the time. And, you know, it's like, hey, we have people who are like resistant to utilizing technology. And I think, you know, last year and I guess this year as well with COVID, people have been more, um, I don't know if say comfortable, but they've been more willing because really they don't have a choice. Right. Mm -hmm. So like what it like what what do you think they specifically did? Because I think there's like what's what like, you know, what's the secret? What How did they get you? excited about using technology like because that you know that is something that people struggle with all over and when you're referencing that that people got you interested in that like obviously it's part you know your willingness to learn but what do they do specifically like do you have anything a strategy that you know people could learn from that might get them more excited about or like better able to help people you know try to use you know some new tools mm -hmm. well it first started because they had different workshop series and workshops that they were running and so I started attending in, in my district. We have a lot of uh, pro, pro D opportunities that mm -hmm. were after school and, and sometimes during the day as well. And so we just learning about the different tools and then having her come into my class, uh, Janet to come into my classroom to team teach with me. And then I saw what a difference it made to, to all learners, our ELL right. learners, the, the struggling uh, writers and the, at, at the, at the, uh, all levels, right? Even the ones that already excel in writing. And so we just really saw that low floor, high ceiling. And yeah. the it's almost like these students came alive, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not something, you know, I did this uh, 15 years ago, more than 15 years ago. And so back then, you know, some, some schools were only starting to get more technology into the classroom, right? And mm -hmm. starting to get labs and things like that. And just when I saw such a difference in their learning, that's what inspired me to do it more. And so it, you know, then even before joining the team, I would even do like Tech Tuesdays where people would come into the lab and, and learn from me, right? And so just kind of building uh, that desire to teach other people because it's kind of like, you know, when, have you ever received a, a good stock tip? Yeah, I have. 
I've right? got bad ones too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same kind of thing. When somebody yeah. gives you that good stock tip and you're like, oh, this is this really works. It makes yeah. such a difference for students. And you know, for me, it's um, it's really changed my life trajectory as an educator, meeting these two uh, people that, that I actually am really grateful and blessed to have the opportunity to work with. I was on the team for six years uh, before leaving. I've been uh, away from the team for three years, so back in the classroom. But yeah, those two are truly incredible educators that have not only inspired me, but a lot of people. And the well, ripple effect, right? Yeah, and the thing that, uh, one of the things that I try to do, and you touched on it with, you know, uh, the, these two educators is, um, a lot of times when I present, I, I show s stuff that students have done. Right. And I think it actually, and you see the excitement, the power that kids have, like, you know, if you're saying, oh, our kids can't do it. And then I show a video of a bunch of kids doing what I say, then it's like, wow, maybe like, maybe I have my expectations lower. And I think that, you know, if you want people to embrace this, they have to see the impact it can have on kids. And I think a lot of times that's where the, you know, we, we move it from that theory to actual practice, actual, um, you know, impact. And I think that's really powerful. So you, you gotta say, you gotta say this for me. Okay. So yeah. like, you gotta say shout out and then say their names and then I'm going to hit my, my fun air horn. <laughs> you gotta say it loud though. Okay. So cause okay. they're probably watching cause I'm sure they're like, they're, you know, they, they're probably cheering for you right now. So say yeah. it, you gotta do it. Shout out to Janet Chow and Lucky Siney. It's like my favorite button. I love it. Of, it's like my favorite button of anything. So, okay. All right. So right now, currently, you know, you're a head teacher mm -hmm. and you still are teaching and, yes. and head teacher. And when we were talking about this before, it's kind of like an uh, assistant principal. Is that correct? Equivalent sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, help, okay. I, I work with the principal closely. Yeah. And so like you, you shared a really great, you shared a really great story of leadership of people who might not necessarily be administrators, right? And that is a really important aspect is that some of the best leaders I've ever met aren't, you know, in title administrators. But if you actually think of an administrator, um, who is someone that's like impacted your practice, maybe someone, you know, as a student, who's like someone that stuck out to you? So that would be my previous administrator. Her name is Janice Nakatsu. And about 14 years ago, for four years, she was my administrator at, uh, at nearby school. Um, and what made her stand out was that she believed in me, she gave me opportunities, uh, she trusted me, and just the way that she led, she, you know, when I, when I talked to her, she's, she's become a good friend now, but when I talked to her, she would just say, well, I was just doing what I felt needed to be done, right? Mm -hmm. And she doesn't see herself as somebody like, you know, that, um, that does anything more than what's need, needed to be done, but it was just the way that she connected with people. Uh, you know, she was quite incredible. We had on our staff, we had a, uh, a trip down to San Fran for four days. And there were 30 people that on, on our staff that went down to San Fran. Um, and she, she planned another one where, where they went to Seattle for a weekend and, you know, yeah. had a dozen people. Um, and, you know, I know like, uh, people would say, you know, how do you, how do you get people to do things for you? You know, you know, there are things that come up, right? That principals will need leaders to step up and whatnot. And people would constantly like raise their hand and go, oh, what do you need help with? And I think it was because of the way that she really cared for other people that if there was something that she was asking, you wanted to give back, mm -hmm. right? It's got, like, I've had leaders like that and you're kind of, you kind of are starting to do stuff that you hate and you're like, how did this person get me to do this? Right. Like I, like I get, I always point to Kelly Wilkins. She was my uh, principal years ago and just same thing. And, and really kind of taught me the importance of making people feel valued and how, how amazing it is. And I think it's like genuine, authentic conversations. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we try to force it in education with doing, uh, icebreakers and stuff like that, which actually makes, I hate them to be honest with you. If you want me not to like, you probably do icebreakers, but like, if you actually have those genuine authentic where people are trying to get to know you or having those conversations. And so, um, that that's awesome. And it's, it's like basically everyone you're listing has, you know, everyone you're talking about is become like super tight with you. So like nobody wants to leave you ever. Right. Like it's, so that's awesome. So it's Janet, right? So like big shout out Janet, if you're listening, yeah. 
Janice. Janice. Oh, jeez. Okay, sorry, Janice. I messed it up. So, Janice, if you're listening. Love it. Okay, so last question. And um, I actually I actually fell onto your work through reading your blog and seeing some of the stuff that you're posting online and sharing. And you are basically just an avid learner. You're always connecting and sharing and, you know, talking about new stuff. So when you look back at your career, and I think you said you have taught for, what, 22 years so far? Yeah. Is that what you said? So I, I think that, you know, I'm a big believer that like we all are a little embarrassed of our first years, right? There's stuff we can go back and wish we wouldn't have done. And like, hopefully the kids that we taught then are okay. Uh, you know, and it's not that, I don't think it's that people were bad when they first started. I just think we, if you're really good at your job, you'll learn and grow. And so like, if you look back, you know, through your, your 20 plus year career and you look back at your, you know, first year or two of teaching, like what advice would you give yourself? Well, you know, teaching is hard work and Mm -hmm. it's even harder if you're not yourself. So I would say that for me, I lead with my heart. I live with my heart. I, I speak to people with my heart. And so I would say, teach with your heart, whatever is in your heart, bring what you have to your children. So, you know, for me, I love to have fun and make sure, you know, like you you say it all the time, like, would you want to be a student in your class? Mm -hmm. Right. I've heard you say that a number of times. And so I want to be that teacher and I have kids too. I've always wanted to be that kind of teacher where they would love to be in my class. And they would ask me too, like, can we be in your class? Anyhow. Um, so like, you know, making sure that things were, were fun. Um, and I, you know, something that I've been sharing recently a lot is that in that every, every opportunity, or sorry, every interaction is an opportunity to uplift others through kindness, and, and your gratitude and to help make their day a, a brighter one. And so, you know, when I say lead with my my heart, it's the same thing that in every child, you know, as, as a first year teacher, you may be struggling, you may have, you know, good days, bad days, uh, but in every interaction that you have with a child, make it count, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you have an opportunity to uplift that child or tear them down and there's no in between. There really isn't, right? And so, you know, through that and, you know, showing appreciation, because that, that's something that I, I really um, think is so important to who I am is to really show appreciation and, you know, uh, those kinds of things. And I think, you know, I actually, I still keep in touch with some of my students from my first year. And one of my students, uh, her name's Jacqueline, and, you know, she says that in all of her years, she's 29 years old now, okay? Um, mm-hmm. And I know you still connect with uh, some of your, your students that you had many years ago. Um, and she still says that I, I was the teacher that had the biggest impact on her. Um, and so I asked her why. And, you know, and I think it was, it was the, it's, it's the little things, right? It, it wasn't curriculum. I don't think mm-hmm. it was curriculum. But it's just the way, you know, Maya Angelou's quote, right? It's the way you make people feel. That's what they remember. And so really deeply caring for people. And so, you know, when you, when I think you can pour your heart into what you do and just really love the children that you have been blessed with to teach for the year, that, that's my advice to, to any first year teachers, just be yourself, be authentic and, and give of your own heart as you lead these students. And that's like, and I, and I love that advice because I think, you know, when, when people are hearing this too, right. And we always talk about really appreciating our kids, you know, being positive and just, you know, being ourselves. Part of that authenticity is sometimes when we struggle and we have a hard time. Right. And I actually remember, uh, there is one time I had, um, a student and, uh, we were, he was, I was doing something in the library and he, he was, we had a good relationship and he was like knocking. And I said, just like, hold on a second. And he knocked and I was like, dude, like, hold on. Right. And he looked at me through the glass and he went and he said, F you, but he didn't say F. And he like looked at me and I was like, livid. I couldn't believe. And that was actually the first time a kid ever swore at me. I would love to say it was the first and only, I would be lying. And I was so mad. I was so upset about it. And I like, went and he 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 saw me and he ran like he took off because he knew he was I, I upset him or he that i was like quite upset and i went and talked to him 
And, you know, he, he came back to like, he actually took off and he came back to the, to the class, to the school. And I said, Hey, you know what, dude, that what you said to me, like, I, I'm not mad at you. I, it was super inappropriate, but my parents are actually coming here tomorrow. And I'm like a little bit embarrassed that I do a job where someone would say that to me. And so that's what that's, I just want to let you know that like, I'm embarrassed a little bit because that's like, how do I tell my mom and dad Mm -hmm. that I signed up for a job where kids are telling me that. And I would like, I, instead of like being, you know, like, Oh, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. I actually was, I was bothered. I was like, is this, this is what I'm doing in my life. I'm having 12 year olds telling me F off. And so he, he was, he, the next, like this kid went out of his way to connect with me after because I could have just said like, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. But I said like, Hey, this actually bothered me. Like, this is not, I don't feel comfortable that you talk to me like this. And I don't feel comfortable because my parents are actually, and we talked about this. We'll probably talk about this in the next podcast. Right. My parents actually came to cook for the staff the next day because, you know, my parents owned a restaurant for years. As you said, your, your family had a restaurant and that, that being authentic self actually connected me to that kid, you know, and saying like, Hey, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with what you just did. And I think sometimes we have to be comfortable doing that because sometimes it's like, Hey, we're only up. We only have good emotions. And we know this when we're authentic with the people we connect with, when we, when they, when they see a struggle, you know, it's, they, they, there's that power. So I really appreciate, you know, that you shared that. So it's, it's really cool that you're connected with, uh, you know, all these people. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to a continued conversation with you to, to get to know you better and um, just furthering the learning. So everyone, make sure yeah, you're going to see uh, Livia's uh, information down below. So make sure you give her a follow on everything that we share uh, for sure on Twitter. But Livia, it, it was awesome to talk to you. I'm looking forward to more conversation. Yeah, dance. All right. See you later, everybody.